Nearly two years ago, I scooped up a jar full of rainwater and sediment from the water butt in my garden. I sealed it up completely and allowed it to develop as a closed ecosphere. For various reasons, I can't keep this going forever, and it's nearly time for this experiment to come to a close. But before I return the contents of the jar to the water butt, let's take a close look inside. If you recall the first days and weeks of this ecosphere, it was teeming with life. Lots of little swimming things. Some of them multicellular organisms like rotifers and ostracods, as well as some of the larger unicellular life that is just within the resolving power of my cheap little USB microscope. Now it's really rather quiet in there. There's still a lot of life in there, mostly algae and cyanobacteria and other photosynthetic organisms. These are the things that have sustained the viability of the ecosphere by producing oxygen as a waste product of photosynthesis. So some of the things you're looking at in this view are probably single cells. That might seem surprising, but for reference, the entire width of the view here is only a couple of millimetres. Here's what my little microscope can see of the millimetre scale of a ruler, alongside some line drawings of a few larger single-celled organisms for reference. Taking a step back and looking at the jar as a whole now, the water is crystal clear because of course any sediment has long since settled out. And a lot of the suspended living things have been filtered out and eaten by other things. There's a big blob of filamentous algae at the bottom of the jar. This originally grew as a sort of curtain at the shady side of the jar, but it got to a size where it collapsed under its own weight and it settled down into that blob at the bottom there. The microscope has a tiny field of view and very shallow depth of field, so in spite of seeing the occasional glimpse of moving things in there, it's nearly impossible to actively hunt them down. The slightest nudge of the equipment knocks it out of focus, so really the only thing I can do is set it up and wait patiently in the hope that something will wander through the scene. And in the several hours I spent doing that, here's what I saw. Of course, lots of algae and other things that are alive and grow, but don't really move. Not very certain what any of these are, but they're definitely alive. Some little strands of moving stuff, most likely not moving on their own, but rather just wisps of algae being stirred up by thermal convection in the water. Some other larger things moving steadily too far inside the jar to focus on, but most probably bubbles of gas, either from decomposition of sediments or perhaps bubbles of oxygen released by the photosynthetic organisms in the jar. Then, something moving under its own power. Really too small to see what this actually is. It could be something like a juvenile rotifer or maybe a unicellular organism like a protist. Interestingly, there's actually significant overlap in size between the largest single-celled organisms and the smallest multicellular animals. Maybe someone watching can hazard a guess on what this might be based on its movement or behaviour, even at this rather poor resolution. So after nearly two years inside a jar on a bright north-facing windowsill, this hermetically sealed ecosphere is still capable of sustaining living things that swim about. And then finally, after hours of waiting and recording, I saw a copypod. And once I'd spotted one, it wasn't long before I saw others, or at least one other. Distinguishable from the first because, for a copypod, this is quite a large specimen. I suppose it might be the case that all of the things in the jar that might possibly eat a copypod have perhaps died out. Leaving the copypod in place as the apex predator, if it can really be called that. And after taking all of that time to show itself, it now seemed to be eager to photobomb every shot. Not exactly in focus, but still, we can see this is a really fine specimen of a copypod. Anyway, it's now time for this experiment to draw to a close, as I can't keep this jar in my studio here any longer. So I returned the contents to the water butt and rinsed the sediment back in there too. I suppose I could have just tipped it down the drain, but some soft-headed part of me imagines a strange family reunion scene between the copypods in the jar and their cousins many times removed in the water butt. So that's the end of this journey. Another one will begin sometime soon, perhaps with water sourced from somewhere else, like a brackish estuary or a lake. I hope this has been interesting. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.